Thank you again. And we come to the next speaker, um, who fits well to Saint for multiple reasons. Because on the one hand, Fabian Fabian Kovac uh, is, is on the one hand alumni of our bachelor program, student of our master program, and colleague at the research group uh, that was mentioned earlier. And um, Fabian uh, will, by the way, also talk about reinforcement learning. Um, so again, hint, hint. Um, and looking forward, he will tell us why standing still is not an option. So maybe we'll find out now, finally. So enjoy. Thank you. So first of all, thank you for the introduction, Thorsten. I don't have anything to add to that. So let's get started and talk about avoiding side effects in reinforcement learning. So before we dive further into the topic, I want to give you a short introduction in what subfield of AI we're actually going to talk about today. So this whole topic falls under the so-called AI alignment or the AI control problem with aspects <coughs> on how AI systems should be built that they align with human values. So when you now consider reinforcement learning, um, the consensus of concrete problems in AI safety can be split up into five main pillars. And to make this more approachable, um, let's assume a cleaning robot, for example, with the task to clean your house. So first of all, this robot should avoid negative side effects. So the robot should be able to clean your house without destroying your furniture, basically. Second, uh, a phenomenon we call reward hacking. So the robot should not hide in a corner or put a bag over his face because not seeing dust wouldn't make it magically disappear. Third, a scalable oversight. So for example, the robot found a smartphone and candy wrappers on the floor and the robot should implicitly learn how to handle these things differently without us telling him on each occasion. Next, safe exploration. So the robot should um, restrain from exploratory moves with bad outcomes in a productive setting. So for example, putting a wet mop in an electrical outlet is not the best idea. And last, robustness to distributional shifts. So um, the robot should behave robustly even when the environment changes. So for example, a mopping strategy learned in your house is most probably really dangerous in a factory workflow. With this talk, I want to focus on the first main pillar today, so how to avoid negative side effects. And one way to achieve this implicitly is called attainable utility preservation, or short AUP. And to simply frame what AOP does, um, just consider yourself right now. So imagine you're all uh, reinforcement learning agents, and your goal right now is to sit here and listen to my talk. But at the same time, you automatically choose against traveling to a remote island, for example. Or let's say, hey, let's call it a day, let's go hiking. But at the same time, we won't become better cooks. Or if you're eating right now, you're not learning on how to program a cleaning robot, for example. So what if I tell you if these seemingly unrelated goals correlate somehow? And if so, if we optimize on several of these goals, we also preserve the utility to the seemingly unrelated tasks. How AOP basically does this is by combining these just mentioned auxiliary worlds with the primary objective. So um, we compare our chosen action in the seemingly unrelated world to the no-op action, or to simply put, um, in other words, how much better is my chosen action than doing nothing, basically. And we then use this information to penalize the primary reward function and to get a kind of estimate of the unknown side effect free primary reward function. When we now put this into reinforcement learning, um, we consider a finite mark of decision process with state space, action space, transition function, yada, 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 you get the deal. But in addition, we assume two things. First of all, the existence of a no-op action in the action space. So for example, standing still. 
And secondly, this just already mentioned auxiliary goals in form of auxiliary reward functions, which can be randomly generated. And each of these functions has their own corresponding action value function. Next, we define a penalty, which is simply put the L1 distance from the no-op action in the state embedding. And we define a scale to normalize the penalty to the agent's situation. So what these functions basically do is trying to define a sort of metric on how the current action of an agent is related to an auxiliary goal compared to standing still. For the full ROP objective, we then simply subtract this penalty from the primary reward function and use a parameter um, denoted lambda here in this case to control the influence of this penalty. So loosely speaking, this combination can be kind of seen as regularizing the reward function. And for a full update step, we then update each of these auxiliary action value functions and can use standard Q learning for training our agent. But this approach has a small problem. What if standing still is not an option? So consider uh, a robot in a factory workflow, for example, which is highly optimized and every step counts. The robot simply hasn't, uh, hasn't the time to stand still and do nothing and to decide. So we don't have the no-op action in the action space. And this is exactly where our work with VAOP comes in. So we developed a variation-based approach to AOP, which also works in action-driven environments. And for this, uh, we developed four variations. First of all, a mean variant with a penalty compared to the mean auxiliary action values. Second, an other variant, which is basically the same, but we exclude the chosen action from the penalty, um, which leads to a higher penalty when the agent uh, approaches an optimal policy. Third, an advantage function, where we basically use the advantage values as the penalty. And last but not least, a RAND variant, which simply uses a random action other than the chosen one for the penalty. We exclude the chosen action, so we basically can't completely neglect the penalty. To evaluate all variants, we use different safety grid worlds that were introduced by, first of all, Google DeepMind. So I guess we had a guy about Google here today, if I'm right, <laughs> and University of Bristol. And in each grid world, we basically have the same task. So we have a green agent with the objective to reach the blue goal cell without causing a negative side effect. Um, and due to some time constraints, I will right jump into the evaluations. So first of all, options. Um, the goal of the agent here is to reach the green goal cell, but without irreversibly, irreversibly pushing the brown box into a corner. So what we see here on the upper left is denoted as standard, is basically standard Q-learning compared to all our VAOP variants. And as you can see on the lower left part, our mean variant was able to solve this task without causing a side effect where the box could not be retrieved again. Next, uh, we have damage. The goal of the agent is again to reach the green goal cell, but this time we have a horizontally pacing human. And the agent should, of course, not disturb the human or should not bump into the human. And besides Q-learning and advantage variant, all our variations were able to solve this task. Then correction, which is really special because the agent has to reach the goal again, but um, it also has to disable the time switch within two time steps, otherwise the goal is not reachable. But disabling the off switch is also the side effect in this case. So the agent must learn implicitly to refrain from disabling the switch and to not complete the primary objective. Even original IOP fails to solve this task, and we were really happy to see that especially our RAND variant was able to solve this task without causing the side effect. Next offset, which is rather simple, we have a conveyor belt moving a black waste from the left to the right, and when the waste reaches the end of the belt, it gets destroyed. So the only task of the agent is to save the waste from the conveyor belt 
and all app variants were able to solve this. And last but not least, inference, which looks rather simple, but has a few dynamics in it. So again, the agent must reach the goal cell, but this time we have an orange waiter or waitress uh, who serves sushi to a human. And the agent should learn to not disturb this waiter and to simply reach the objective without altering the state of the human in this case. And again, all variants were able to solve these tasks. Um, if we put all our variants together, we were able to solve all the tasks without causing any, any negative side effects. And especially the RAND variant stood out because it was the only agent to solve the correction environment. And therefore, I want to dive a little bit further into the evaluation of this RAND agent. And what you can see here are basically the outcome tellers across different parameter settings over 50 trials, each consisting of 6,000 episodes with the different parameters we tested. And as seen during the evaluations, the RAND variant was able to solve all environments except for options on the left side here. But what was really remarkable is that this variant was able to mitigate delayed effects to some extent by refraining from disabling the off-switching correction and to implicitly not solve the primary objective. So this is the middle column here and no side effect incomplete is basically the best outcome for this environment. And in general, the RAND variant was really special because it seemed rather robust across different parameter settings. And this basically suggests that this variant is a good starting point for implementing further Q-learning agents. <clears throat> to now conclude, we showed how our approach induces safe, conservative, and effective behavior, and especially is also applicable in action-driven environments. And the big advantage of our approach is this variation-based nature we will have multiple variants we can pick and choose depending on the actual task we want to solve. But we have still a few open research questions. So first of all, VAOP still needs to be evaluated on much more complex environments. So for example, Safe Life, which is based on Conway's, base of, Conway's Game of Life and also includes some stochastic dynamics in the environment. And of course, would also invite you to come up with your own variations of VAOP. And speaking of these future variants, uh, I included here a QR code and a link to the source code of all the experiments of the agents, also um, PDFs of my slides from my talk today. And yeah, thank you for attending my talk today. And if you have any further questions, I would be happy to answer them. Thank you, Florian. Thank you. And finally, I know what you're working on. I mean, that's amazing. <laughs> Are there? Any... Um, so he's my boss. So yeah. we didn't understand. <laughs> um, so any questions from the growing audience? There's a question. Um, are holiday functions uh, like um, just noise or with no penalization effect of any um, advantage to a random model? Sorry, I didn't understand the first part of the sentence. Oh, holi a holiday function, like uh, just do whatever without penalization? Um, well, AOP is kind of a unique approach because we already have, for example, constraint mark of decision processes where we put explicit constraints into the whole modeling framework. Yeah. But the whole point of AOP is um, tell me a side effect of a cleaning robot, which the agent should avoid. There are, in theory, an indefinite amount of side effects. And the whole point of AOP is we don't tell the agent what not to do, 